write down the energy conversion that takes place in this motor. Well, we are already told that it is a motor. But even if we were not told, we will be able to tell because of the presence of a power source. But what energy conversion takes place in a motor? Electrical energy is converted to mechanical energy. And then for generators, it is the other way around. Mechanical energy is converted to electrical energy. Let's look at 9.1.82. Is the motor above an AC motor or a DC motor? It is a DC motor. Why are we saying so? The presence of commutators or what we call split rings. That's what tells us that is a DC motor. If we had slip rings, then it would be an AC motor. You can literally see that we have a ring that is split in half. And in AC motors, we have slip rings. Let's move to 9.1.3. What is the function of the commutator in this motor? It allows induced current to flow in one direction. It allows current to flow in one direction. The small reasons you can possibly give, but let's just stick with that for the time being. Let's look at the question that follows, 9.2. So a resistor Y is rated 220 volts, 100 watts, and is connected to a 220 volts AC source, as shown in the circuit below. 9.2.1, let's calculate the resistance of resistor Y. Well, how can we possibly find the resistance of resistor Y? We have to start with the information that we're given. And then the information that we're given is going to guide us to the formula that we need to use. So let's go ahead and see how that will look like. So we have a power of 100 watts, and we have a voltage required and supplied of 220 volts. So with these three variables, which formula can you use? It should be easy to see that power is equal to V squared divided by R. We have a power of 100 watts, a voltage of 220. We square that and we divide by the resistance. So the resistance is going to be equal to 220 squared divided by 100. So the resistance of our resistor Y is 484 ohm. And just like that, we have answered 9.2.1. Let's look at 9.2.2. Another resistor Z with the rating 220 volts and X watts is now connected in series to a resistor Y and to the same AC source. See the diagram below. Uh, we can clearly see that we now have Z here. The power dissipated by resistor Y changes to 80 watts while its resistance remains the same. 9.2.2, calculate the power rating X of resistor Z, assuming that resistor Z has constant resistance. I have no idea how I'm going to answer this question. I'm going to write down the variables. And after writing down the variables, I'm sure an approach is going to present itself. So let me go ahead and do that. We have the resistance of resistor Y. It is 484 ohms. And we have the power that it dissipates now, which is 80 watts. So with power and resistance, what can I calculate? Let's say I use this information to calculate the current. The current that resistor Y is experiencing is the same current that resistor Z is experiencing. So I have the current for Z. I just need one more variable from Ohm's law to be able to calculate the power that is dissipated by Z. So with this resistance and the power I have, I can calculate the voltage across Y. If I calculate the voltage across Y and I have the total voltage in the circuit, then I can easily find the voltage across Z. So now I have the current that Z is experiencing 
I have the voltage across that, it will be easy to find the power. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to see that the power is equals to I squared multiplied by R. So we have 80 watts being equals to I squared. What is the resistance? The resistance is 484. So we're going to have I squared being equals to 80 divided by 484. We can take square roots on both sides and get a current which is equals to 0 0.407 ampere. So now I have the current that resistor Z is experiencing. Let me go ahead and find the potential difference across Y so that I can find the potential difference across Z. So I can say that uh, I have the current in the resistance, so I can just say V is equals to I multiplied by R. What is the voltage? It's what I'm looking for. The current is 0 0.407 multiplied by the resistance, which is 484. So the potential difference is going to be equals to 196.77 volts. This is the potential difference across Y. Let me go ahead and find the potential difference across Z. So the total voltage is obviously equals to the potential difference across Y plus the potential difference across Z. Uh, so we have 220 being equals to 196.77 plus the voltage across Z. So the voltage across Z will be equals to 220 minus 196.77. If you do that math, you shall get 23.23 volts. So there we go. I have the potential difference across Z and the current across Z. This is where things get a bit tricky now because you might be thinking we can come in and say P is equals to V multiplied by I. But if we do that, we're going to find the power that Z is consuming, is dissipating at the very moment it is connected with Y in series. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the power rating when it is functioning at its maximum capacity, when it is getting a voltage of 220 volts. So the only thing we can do with this voltage is to find the resistance of Z. And then after finding the resistance of Z, we're going to use a voltage of 220 because we're trying to find its rating when it is functioning at maximum capacity. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to have R being equals to V divided by I. So V, that is 23.23 divided by I, which is 0 0.407. If you put that in your calculator, you should get 57.8, not 0.8, but 0 0.08 ohms. And now we can come to the rating on X. The rating on X will be V squared divided by R. We are calculating the power it dissipates when it is functioning at maximum capacity. So the voltage is 220 squared at maximum capacity, right? Divided by the resistance, which is 57.08. The resistance stays the same. It doesn't matter whether it is functioning at maximum capacity or not. And if we do that math, which will get 847.93 watts.